you know, I feel like this this segment is reaching its middle age. And when you reach your middle age, you have to find ways to spice things up. You have to bring, you know, some whipped cream into the bedroom. So rather than just kind of going through the the missionary motions of just reading from our big stack of books here, it seems like the best thing to do was to try and write our own. Which everyone but Nicole was happy to do. <laughs> <laughs> now, in in fairness, Nicole did read the first uh, homemade piece of erotica in this show, so I do. I guess you got a pass on that. First and you could, second, I believe. You could just reread that one. So, <laughs> you know what? I might have it right I, here. I like this. This is like a cottage industry erotica. Um, yeah. You know, more of a local handcrafted erotica. Yeah, straight from the By, source. Buy local because if you like, if you knew the carbon footprint of importing your erotica from, I don't know, like Japan, like it's just, it's terrible. And a lot of that erotica is made in sweatshops, so you don't. <laughs> Which we're all we're all pro sweatshop here, and everyone here is that's a good thing, right? Because everyone here is pro sweatshop. Well, I don't have erotica here, but I did open up a notebook that's sitting on the table here at the desk that um, has a list in it titled things to get my dick hard. So maybe I'll see, I'll ask Ryan's permission to maybe read that later. <laughs> yep. All right. So who's starting with their creative works today? What, what, what's our plan here? Should we roll for it? I don't have dice, but you can roll for me, Kelly. Yeah. Well, I, I got a, a I great board. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm going to go from in order of cameras here. So I'm going to do Tanner first. Okay. Got a nice four. four there. And I'm going to do Josh. Five. Five. Are we going in ascending or descending order? Yeah. I would say highest number starts. All right. And then uh, we're going to go Nicole. Also Another four. four. Wait, no, Nicole didn't do one. So yeah. <laughs> uh, and then me. So you're starting Kelly. And then I All guess right. I go next. Okay, so uh, my piece that I wrote. Um, well, first we should see your face there, Kelly. Oh, no, I, I think I just really want to dwell on the the dice cam and how those cool little sloping bumpers now force everything into the camera view. Let's just take a moment to appreciate it. I don't, I don't know if we should. All right. So I, I have had the misfortune of flipping through a frankly unforgivable amount of romance novels and just other weird books trying to mine for content. And I've definitely noticed a lot of patterns. So I kind of decided to try and see if I could write a sort of, maybe the, just a platonic form of the romance novel of like really the themes they go through and what they like to focus on. And in particular, the one kind of, I guess I would say body part that they shockingly seem to come back to. No, makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Yeah. So that context, my story is called a journey in the dense woods. Elizabetha whirled around her flaxen hair cascading like a turbulent, but soothing ocean over her shoulders. She could not believe Nigel could be so cold and blunt. He was always a stuffy old miser, but he had been particularly insufferable the last few weeks. Being the empath that she was, she knew he was either jealous, or his wife had moved out of the manor again, or perhaps a touch of both. Pardon me, my lord, she asked coldly and bluntly. You heard me very well, Miss Humpersham, he shot back, coolly and undiplomatically. I promise you that nothing good will come of you gallivanting around with that unrefined oaf. He may be of noble blood, but he has the wildness of a common sailor. Do you forbid me to see him, my lord? She addressed her question with a frigid terseness. His response was as icy as it was frank. I knew it would make no difference if I tried, he said candidly and utterly devoid of warmth. She was halfway down the stairs by the time he finished the sentence. She barely slowed down when Rothbard attempted to question her on her way out the portcullis. 
Don't wait up for me, my lord. I have much to attend to. And then there's the little, like, asterisks that are sort of a bit of an act break. So, for the... It's, it's one of the... Can I interrupt? Is this, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, I guess so. What is one of the things that you noticed when you were reading your erotica that there tends to be two adjectives for no fucking reason? Like, <laughs> after every verb? Uh, I just sort of, I, I noticed that a lot of the conversations are very self-serious and, um, I also started writing this like an hour before we started. So I just started going for, I did a lot of Googling for adjectives for, you know, cold and blunt. So cold and blunt came up a few times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, while we're interrupted, is your, is your, you're on that same microphone, right? Yeah. Is it like, is your dial cranked way up on it? Uh, the uh the gain dial gain How's yeah because i'm i'm hearing like every dog movement i would turn it down if you can i just did is that okay. still that's probably better okay it was nary an hour later when she found herself in chanceworth's embrace at the seaside but it had felt like a day's journey the ocean breeze ruffled her hair like the drapes she used to peer through pining for him as she watched him stroll through the courtyard from afar. She was so shy then, but she still was, and even though it wasn't the first time he'd held her like this, that was 400 pages ago, each of the countless times he'd wrapped his strong arms around her at this persistently windy outcropping in the intervening chapters, it felt brand new again. Still, even this time, it truly felt different. We've denied ourselves so long. He whispered throatily in her ear, her now unleashed hair tumbling across his coarse beard. Surely you can feel how thoroughly I yearn for you. It was true. Through her thin dress, she could feel every part of him pressed against her, with a very particular protrusion straining his breeches. She had yet to see it, but she could envision it from what she could glean by touch and longed to stroke it. A deep mahogany mat of tightly wound curls, <laughs> manicured but still masculine. She sighed deeply, leaning back into him, giving him his cue to wander his hands down her slender body to their ultimate goal. Softly, but firmly, his fingers massaged their way into the fine thatch of maple that formed a feminine triangle just below her waist. <laughs> it felt like a lifetime ago that a man had been down there, so long ago that the one she'd been with was nearly a boy with his unkempt walnut hedge fumbling awkwardly against her unruly birchen bush. <laughs> <laughs> Why the trees? <laughs> Do you desire this? He asked, shattering her daydream. Her ha his hands were edging their way to remove her vestments. Yes, my lord, she responded breathily. Yes, most indeed. It all happened in a blur of fabric and flesh and swishing locks most private. Finally, after so many near encounters, after so many longing gazes, after so many inscrutable side plots, she had him where she needed him most, his masculine tangle straining her at her awaiting rug, both <laughs> manes glistening now with anticipatory sweat. Wait, for the record, do they have genitals or is this just all pubes? <laughs> oh, they got genitals. It's just, you know, you focus on the most erotic parts, which is the pubes. <laughs> right, 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 right. Cool. Silly me. Go on. Without so much as foreplay, his now inelastic and ungiving erogenous member was inside her, but she hardly noticed. What resonated through her most strongly was the fateful intertwining of their respective intimate tresses playing at each other, <laughs> first gently kissing freshly shorn tips, then their very follicles becoming almost as one. The dance of his musky male fur against her dainty sensuous fleece brought profound ecstasy welling within them both. This went on for a blissful eternity, encapsulated concisely in a tidy six paragraphs, culminating in an obligatory climax at the exact same moment. As she thrashed, he withdrew his ever-rigid scepter and spilled his carnal juices onto her most precious wool, his thick <laughs> chest heaving. As he collapsed beside her, she rolled over and clutched her soft hand into his sated woolen forest. He laughed softly, but in a way that was still conventionally manly. <laughs> Do you care to rest there a while, my love? She smiled demurely. I'm never letting go, my lord. The end. Oh, God. Uh, that was 
That was incredible. Very nice. I object to the term throatily. <laughs> I love that that's what you object to above all else in that. No, the rest was great. No notes. <laughs> I mean, that's also a thing like it that was a big part of the the Charles and Camilla erotica. But I found another like throaty laugh in a romantic scene in one of these books. So I was like, I, I guess you got to have that. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Everyone wants a phlegmy lover. <laughs> Mine's going to be a little more R rated. Uh, yours left a lot to the imagination. Mine's going well, that's to not... mine is romance. Yours is erotica. It's a, mine's you know, mine's well not going to leave anything to the imagination. So uh, we'll know. start here. We're going to start uh, in the midst of the act. I stood her up and let her grab onto the backside of the sofa. At long last, I would look at her everything. I unzipped the remainder of her dress and pulled down her panties. Her p***ed up p faced me in anticipation. A stream of her d leaked down from her happy h letting me know she was ready and waiting for action. <laughs> I grabbed her left leg and raised it up, holding her sideways. Her p raised to the world. I locked myself in. <sighs> You're finally inside me. <laughs> surrounded me as I became one with her. I slowly pulled out, giving <laughs> a nice <laughs> before going into full dive. Her <laughs> had already coated my <laughs> like white. <laughs> she was definitely <laughs> down there. This woman was without question already in full meltdown. Better get her off nice and good before she got impatient. I, r I wrapped my hand around her leg and thrusted myself in and out. Once again, my vision narrowed until all I could see was a sugary oozing from her as my vanished in and out of her. So this was her. This was her where not even she could see. My slapped against her clapping me vigorously on as she gave me her private performance. Yes, this was her most secret performance. For only me. An applause intensified. Her swayed, and her moans filled the apartment. I shoved myself in deep, but her took everything I had and more. As expected- And more? And more? <laughs> no! What's the- <laughs> I don't want to know. What's the more? What's the more? As expected of lady, her was beyond what I could. She looked back at me, her glassy with. I think I'm. I think I'm. Her clamped down on me as the fine lady first. She covered her face and she as devastated her nerves. Oh no. But this wasn't the end of it. Devastated even. I intensified my power and tore through her clenched <laughs> my other hand traveled up her body admiring every curve until we're arriving at the glorious of her she remained upright as I sideways unquestionably a position that only else could pull off this was too much she was so now poor was giving it his all. Update status to condition red. <laughs> imminent. <laughs> in a minute. Energy spiked through my body, <laughs> causing my hand to clamp down onto her boob, nearly vanishing within. The entire length of my <laughs> slid in and out. At this rate, her <laughs> were pouring out like a <laughs> body of <laughs> her <laughs> convulsed in and out as her muscles spav <laughs> spasm. <laughs> was this woman still <sighs> <sighs> girls really got to hog all the fun. Jesus but I, Christ. I was at my limit. All the pipes in my system cracked and steamed as the <laughs> drained from my body and jammed up in my chowder buster. <laughs> it's too late to abort now. Everything was firing away. <laughs> With one last rush into Nemu's <laughs> I hosed in my <laughs> finger to the brim with Jesus Christ. <laughs> Her <laughs> closed up as my was <laughs> The mats of opposing forces of her <laughs> and my <laughs> met, causing my universe to tear open. <laughs> was backing up. The mighty force. Oh, <laughs> Finally, my <laughs> muscles her <laughs> apart and 
first, it's second, even mightier into her. <laughs> mixed with her a lovely concoction of our own making. Good fucking God. <laughs> so so what, what inspired that? <laughs> Let's let's talk through this. Let's, let's. <laughs> For the record, our fans are loving it. I, I can I can see that. <laughs> I I think it's so funny. Um, in in like erotica because like the different uh different words for the uh male sex organ, and to me like is the much more like sexually infused one, whereas like just sounds really funny. So to hear it in like erotica is just really it just makes it even better. It's like oh yeah my. I'm I'm a big fan of the Chowder Buster, to be honest. Chowder Buster was good. <laughs> My most and least favorite part of that was how like you you had all these euphemisms and then all of a sudden you just said boob. <laughs> yeah, boob was like a it was an outlier as, there. Yeah, as yeah. has um, been <laughs> as has been pointed out by one of our previous guests, you you can't say boob like it's just yeah, no. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, what inspired that is there is a particular genre of video game called the visual novel, and there has not been a single one that has an erotic sex scene that hasn't been the most hilarious thing to read in my entire life. They're all bad, every one of them. And uh, I just wanted to capture the spirit of that in that reading. You know, I think what really... What really changes the vibe is, but you know, between our readings is like I wrote mine ironically, but I could tell yours was extremely sincere. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have to go with. That's what makes it worse is sincerity. If you write that without a trace of irony, it gets so much better. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, um, also, I know, right? <laughs> you hear that a lot, actually, or like. Do you? The f***ing the is a big one you'll hear as well. I, yeah, I've read a couple of things where I'm like, mm, really? You think yeah. you're going into the I don't. Yeah, that's, th those are the big ones. So you always have to include something like that, like, oh, you're f***ing my or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't kink shame here, but. <laughs> so mine. I think it's my turn. Um, it is. Mine, I think, is significantly shorter um, than than those, but also, but but written with love. I wrote it. I think it took. I, I think I was able to do this in about fifteen minutes, uh, which leads me to think that like every time I want to get writing done, I need to have someone give me like a time deadline that I have to read it on a stream because I wrote like five hundred words in like fifteen minutes, which is like that's great. I, I would love to be able to write that much all the time. Um, <laughs> I don't think I have a title, but maybe maybe this is one of those stories where after we read the story, we can we can craft an appropriate title. <clears throat> There's also no humans in this story. Um, oh, interesting. So change of pace here. Um, well, you're bringing it back to the roots. If, if this is like ogres and goblins again. Uh, not that so much. Um, no. we'll see. Goblin these nuts. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. All right. It was a rough night out on the lake, like so many nights before. The kind of night that almost makes a ship crave the touch of another vessel. <laughs> Howling wind... Crashing waves and thick, blanketing fog made for a navigational nightmare. Still, the valiant, three-masted schooner fought her way forward. Suddenly, an imposing shape loomed menacingly, a hulking mass in the low light of the foggy midnight sea. It was... Could it be? It was! A freighter. A big one from the looks of it. Long and sleek, yes but with an admirable girth that would make most vessels on the lakes envious. <laughs> the schooner had little time to gawk, however, as the freighter was barreling down right upon her, roughly amidships, seemingly hell-bent on splitting her asunder. <laughs> the schooner tried desperately to come about, hoping to avoid the worst. 
hoping to avoid the worst with such a sizable beast of a vessel. But to no avail. The impact was fierce, and the freighter's bow plunged into the schooner's flank, slicing into her wooden structure like a penis through butter. <laughs> <laughs> the schooner knew it should have felt wrong. She knew she shouldn't be getting herself into situations like this, certainly not with a big, bulging brute of a freighter like this one. No, her builders would never have approved of this. The freighter must have seen her in the fog first, and had pulled back hard on its engines in the hope of stopping entirely. Owing to these mighty efforts, the weight of the collision wasn't all that it could have been, but still far more than the schooner could take. Deeper. Deeper. The freighter's bow sliced, plunging well beyond what the schooner had ever imagined possible. No one, nothing had ever been this deep inside of her, not even that summer when she spent several months getting dry docked in Sandusky. <laughs> the freighter's engines finally came into reverse, fighting heroically to pull the bow free to little effect. It was a tight fit, and the schooner wasn't giving up so easily. The waves did their work too, smashing against the vessels in their harsh yet sensual embrace. Back and forth they rocked, small progress being made in the extrication, only for the bulky ore carrier to be forced back into the schooner's gaping starboard cavity. <laughs> Pushing, twisting, grinding, thrusting in the waves, the two ships danced. Until yet another impact was felt on the schooner, this one from her stern. The rocks! She'd been pushed onto the deadly dagger-like submarine ridge at the mouth of the bay. <laughs> With the schooner now caught from behind, the, oh, freighter no. managed, the freighter managed to finally pull out, fully spent. Gathering its energy, it turned and set engines to full ahead. The schooner gazed longingly at her paramour. As it sailed off into the mist-draped horizon, never even managing to make out the gold letters of the stranger's name across the stern. The schooner had never felt so full physically or emotionally. Though mostly physically, as her hold was now rapidly filling with water, and the full fury of the lake began to tear her apart. A loud crack was heard, and a mighty canyon appeared to open between her third and fourth cargo hatches. It was the end for the humble little boat, but, oh, what an end it had been. She went beneath the waves, first her bow and then her stern. She drifted down, down, into the cold, murky depths, split open, sunk, but supremely satisfied. <laughs> I am disappointed that you didn't make a single joke about how wet she was. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Bush League. Uh, well, no, what I... Kelly's story was Bush League. What I, what I realized, what I realized is that, like, if you just use all the same words that shipwrecks are written about anyway, it basically is erotica because it's all very penetrative. And like a lot of it talks about <laughs> things like things like gaping open and being split. Like it's like, oh, this is this. This could easily be like morphed into an erotica. So. Well, call me the Gales of November the way I come early with that story. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's o it's okay if you finish a little schooner. <laughs> <laughs> I I did did anyone have an experience of like uh being a young person and reading a cosmo and trying to parse out like whether their sex tips were insane or not? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. One hundred percent. I don't think one... I ever did that. This one that I remember, I was in like junior high and it was like a bunch of us, like they, they, these girls had a Cosmo and we were all like reading it together. And this one was like, they say every seventh wave in the ocean is the strongest. So make I every- I read that exact same tip. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. So make every seventh thrust the strongest. And, uh... I, I'm just trying to imagine doing that where you're like counting to seven constantly, like oh, as. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like, imagine like someone is 
thrusting into you and they're just whispering quietly into their ear like Wah! like just it's like, <laughs> it's like it's like counting out like a very odd time signature um like in music but yeah someone's trying to do prog rock in your <laughs> yeah. hole and like <laughs> that's very that's weird a much that's hilarious do you think that they like repeat that tip like it's in like different like intervals or do you think we just have the exact same copy of cosmo i mean we're no wait i was gonna say you're slightly younger than me i mean this would have i was in junior high so this would have been like i don't know i don't want to work backwards on this i bet you i bet you they copy paste a lot honestly like you gotta put out a it. meaningless magazine every month like you're gonna be just regurgitating whoa 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 meaningless yeah yep. it is it's bad oh. i remember i can't remember even remember what it was but i remember I, uh, like a few years later, had a boyfriend and I was like, I read a magazine once that told me to do this thing. And he was like, don't ever do that. Don't ever do that to anybody. Why would they say that? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say like, especially the the ones involving like, do this to a penis. A lot of them were exceptionally hellish. <laughs> uh. It's, uh, yeah, I remember... When uh, we were, yeah, when we were still pretty young, I guess, like, yeah, probably high school or something like that. Braun and I got a Cosmo. We're like flipping through this, like, we got to figure out, like, what the secrets are here. And looking through them all, we're just like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> what is going on? I one thing that stuck with me in a Cosmo once was it was like it was like tips for not making the guy that you've just hooked up with run away. <laughs> and i specifically it's like burned into my memory they referred to like leaving your underwear out on the floor it was like oh make sure not to leave them out sunny side up <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that to me that was like 17 years ago and i cannot forget that ever that has burned into me forever